Hi guys, I'm Darren. In this episode, I'll show you how to use the trim tabs for other functions, such as momentary switches, on-off switches, freeway switches, and um, how to increment and decrement values. Stay tuned. This is the first of two videos that are going to be released today. They're both pretty closely related, so I thought to get both videos on the subject out at the same time. So this first video is in the Simplify OpenTX series, and we're going to be looking at repurposing the trim switches. And there's a, a few things we can do. We can have momentary switches, we can have on-off switches, and we can have three-way switch. We could actually set it up to a multiple position switch as well. So we're going to be looking at all those options, and the other video that's coming out about half an hour after this one released is in the flight controller therapy series where we actually are going to use trim switches that are repurposed to adjust parameters in flight. Things like your PID values, your cruise throttle, all this stuff we can adjust in flight. But even if you don't use iNav, it may be worth checking out because we're going to be doing some cool stuff. We're only going to be allowing these trim switches to be used like that in a specific OSD position that we're defining. When it's not in that OSD position, the trim switches will function like normal. So there are, there are a few things that you could learn from that, even if you don't use iNav. In particular as well, the way that the adjustment is used. We, we're using a trim switch to choose between 12 different adjustments and an off position. And that's all sent over the radio channels. So it's well worth a look. But right now we'll crack on with our OpenTX video. So I'm gonna, like always, create a brand new model. So this is all completely from scratch. So the first thing that we actually need to look at is how we decouple the trim switches. And why we'd want to do this. So if we run out of switches, we can use these as actual switches and send it over to the plane. Uh, we can use them to adjust different variables or different parameters. But basically, if you can decouple the trims in different flight modes or you can re so you can repurpose them. So if in our normal flight mode, we actually want the trims enabled if we're flying a line of sight plane. So we can still actually trim the thing, but we can add another flight mode and you just disable in that flight mode um, for what you want to do. There's a load of cool things you can do with trims with flight modes. And if you look at the, uh, I believe I did a, a video on setting flaps up, we actually use different flight modes to set the flap positions. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of things we can do, but for, for now, sorry, that should be there for default. We're just going to have a look at how we can use these, these things as switches. I'll go into all the other stuff in different videos because there's probably there are a video of content just on those bits. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is turn off a switch. For this demo, I'm just going to use the throttle trim. So we just go on there and disable trim. You can do use whichever trims you want, but I'm just using throttle because if you follow this example and you fly electric, chances are you're not going to use the throttle trim anyway. Nitro guys might need to look out, but there we go. <laughs> so the first thing that we're going to do is create a really simple momentary switch, which is sent out straight to your transmitter. And it's a really, really simple switch. So what we're going to do is just create the channel that we want to send it out. For the source, we're going to select max. And then in the switch, we're going to use our throttle trim up and then OK that. Now we need to just uh, duplicate this, which on your um, transmitter, if you just click it once, go down and click again, it will make a copy. And then we can edit that. We're going to change the weight to minus 100 and then change it to throttle trim down. So if we OK that, we go in the simulator you see channel six at the moment is in the middle. And as soon as we click the button, it goes up to 100%. And then when we click the down trim, it goes down to uh, minus 100%. So there we, we potentially have a three position momentary switch there. So that's the first type of switch, really, really simple. So I'm just gonna delete these now. 
and we're going to look at another way of doing a momentary switch just in case you want to use it for logic inside INAB. Again, this is really simple to do. We're just going to use the AND condition and we're going to use throttle trim up. We're going to use the AND condition again, throttle trim down. So let's see what this happens now. So we have logic condition one is up, click on that, it's up, logic condition two is down. It's as simple as that. If you wanted to, you could output this to the mixer using the same method as before. And just instead of choosing the, uh, the trim, you could use a logical switch, but it really is just a waste of two logical switches. You may as well just do it directly. This, this is purely for if you want to use these in logic itself. Because on the, uh, the mixer version, you notice we had a middle position as well. So we can add the middle position with these logical switches. At the moment, this is just two, but we can add a third. So we just need to add another and, and just say not logical switch one, not logical switch two. And if we simulate that, you see three is active. It's when we click one is active, when we click the other one, two is active. So we, we again now have our three position momentary switch. So what else can we do? Well, we could use a trim to have two on off. So effectively an extra two two way switches. And again, this is really simple logic. So what we're just going to do is change these to stickies. We'll set it to throttle trim up. And this also needs to be throttle trim up. And this one will be throttle trim down and throttle trim down. So now when we simulate, you see the logical switch one and two is off. When we click up, it comes on. When we click down, logical switch two comes on and we click them again to turn them off. So we have two on off switches. And what we can actually do is also assign these to a radio channel. So you could potentially use these, I don't know, to turning LEDs on and off or a cam switcher, something like that. So again, it's, it's pretty much the same method. We're just going to choose max, 100%. And instead of choosing the trims, we're just going to go logical switch one. And we're going to duplicate that, minus 100. And this needs to be not logical switch one. Okay. So now if we go in the simulation, you'll see channel six is all the way down. As soon as we enable that switch, it's up. So we, we have an on off switch there. If you wanted to use logical switch two for the trim down, you just need to repeat this on another channel using logical switch two instead of logical switch one. So that is the first, first few switches. What we're gonna look at now is how we can have a freeway switch. So this is not the momentary switch that we saw earlier on. This is actually three uh, positions that will stay active until the, the position is moved. So what we're going to use this time is a global variable. So we're going to call it switch. So we'll call it switch one. And what we need to do is have a range of minus one to one. So minus one is going to be our down position, zero will be a middle position and one will be the up position if it was a real physical switch. So next, what we need to do is add a special function. And this is going to be set to on. And we're going to do adjust global variable one. And what we need to do on here is find source. So on your transmitter to get these other options, what you do is actually go to where the value is and hold down the button and it will give you a drop down menu where you have source, increment, um, value and a few other, other things. So we just need to set this to source and then we need to find trim throttle and switch that on. So what that's going to do at this moment, we have our global variable one which is in the, the position zero. So that's the middle position. You click it, it goes in the up position. Trim center. And then in the down position. Trim center. For some reason, the trim voices have started working, which is strange because if we look in here, trim is still disabled. So 
for some reason if you <laughs> increment it or implement this it switches the voice on maybe it's a bug in the simulator we'll find out at some point so we have our free position switch but what if we want to send that over a radio channel we need to add a little bit of logic so let's just clear these two and we're just going to use a equals x and this will be our global variable one and we'll set that to one and if we copy and paste these in all we're going to do is change that to zero and that's a minus one so now we have three logical switches and again on our uh, our channels uh, six we can set it to max 100 percent logical switch one we'll duplicate that set the weight to zero logical switch two we'll duplicate set the weight to minus 100 and logical switch three so if we now simulate we've got our channel six 100 percent trim center off or sorry middle position and then lower position trim center so what if we wanted multiple positions rather than just a free position we can do this which uses a slightly different method which also i can guarantee won't have the annoying trim center and trim beeps if they're actually present in the transmitter with that free position uh, example so the first thing that we need to do is change our switch now this time it needs to be minus 200 to zero so basically if you think of our input if we're going to simulator looking at the throttle it starts at minus 100 and then goes up to plus 100 so what we're going to do is add an offset based on our global variable so depending on how you want this you may want to set the default value to minus 200 which will be effectively in the lowest position or the off position depending on what you're using it for so next what we need to do is add some special functions to change the um, the variable so the next thing that we need to set up is how we actually change the global variable so we're going to set this to the actual trim switch itself this time and we're going to adjust so what you need to do is we're going to actually increment that global variable so the parameter value that you're going to use is actually going to be how many switch positions you want minus one divided by 200 so if for example we want a six position switch we need to minus one to make it five we divide it and we get 40 and then switch it on so we'll copy that paste it in there and we change this to trim down and put that to minus 40. So the next step is just to pop over to the mixer and again we're going to add a max and we're going to set an offset to our global variable switch one. If we OK that, it's all done. So what you'll see is channel six is minus 100. Our global variable is on minus 200. We pop up and our channel has moved and so is the global variable and we can move up and down so you can see now why we need to remove one from the number of switches we need it's because we're actually counting the number of steps whereas it always starts at one position so the number of times we click to get from each end is only five so one two three four five but the positions we have is six so it's one two three four five six so that's why however many positions you want minus one divided by 200 and that will get you a value close enough so if we're going to use i don't know seven for example that will be 28.57 so what we would probably do is set this to 28 and they're going to have to be the same so let's do 28 9 So we start at minus 200. And you can see this, the, the positions are going to be slightly different. So the first position is 71%. And 
when we come back it's 74 percent because there's the the number isn't a, the whole number when you do the, the division but there should be enough tolerance to um deal with that we're talking three three percent there should be enough tolerance in that but there we go so that is how to change your trims to put active switches so i hope you guys found this video useful uh, don't forget to check out the flight controller ver therapy video on the adjustments in inav coming soon because that basically takes this and goes further it, it will show you how to do the the flight mode part so the trims will only be active in the in the specific adjustment flight mode and cool stuff like that so thank you very much guys for watching i hope you've enjoyed it please leave a uh, a like or a thumbs up that would really be great i'd appreciate that please subscribe to the channel if you found the video useful and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so when a new video drops you'll be one of the first people to know about it if you didn't like the video please feel free to leave a thumbs down but please leave a comment as to what i can do to improve the videos to get that thumbs down turned into a thumbs up thanks guys don't forget to get out there fly your models like you stole them and have a great time thank you guys for watching bye bye hi darren hi dickhead